What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 30 of Autodesk Fusion. Can you see it? Yep, day 30. There we go. Alrighty. Uh, anyways, we're working on something here called parametric constraints or driven constraints, um, kind of, is that what you do is you set a parameter and then that way uh, when you change that parameter, your part automatically changes. Now, one good thing to see this in is making cams for automatas is that you want that diameter in the middle to be the same as the shaft is, is, that's going through it. But then if you want your cam to increase in size proportionally, all you have to do is go in and change one constraint. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna make this part right here on the right um, because that is what uh, this drawing file has. And then I'm gonna talk about this part here on the left a little bit and why this is actually gonna be more preferable if you physically make this thing. Um, so let's go ahead and start a new design. And what the first thing I'm gonna do is I love to be efficient. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and bring in that uh, drawing file. That one came in backwards, let's try that again. Or I guess not backwards, uh, inverted. Let's try that one more time. If not, I think there's a uh, ability for me to do a horizontal flip right here. This way, when I am just making my stuff, uh, I never have to be concerned about switching tabs and things like that. This just allows me to see my drawing file or whatever I'm trying to model uh, right there. And then when I don't need it, I can just delete it. I'm gonna set the opacity uh, to a 100. That way I can see it all the way. Click OK. Next I'm gonna do is, what units are we in? And if we zoom in just a little bit, we see we're in inches. So what I'm gonna do is uh, under document settings, units, change the units to inches. And there we go. So start a new sketch. Here we go. First thing I'm going to do, and I found this most helpful when making um, this first pair cam right here. I'm actually going to move it down just a hair, just so that we can see this just a little bit better. Not the other ones. The other ones aren't in our way. Um, what we see here is, I'm going to go back to my sketch. It, this overall shape. Now, what I found out to be easiest, I'm just going to make my inside diameter, and I'm not going to dimension anything. We're going to make this outside that bottom circle. We're going to make a line here, and I'm actually going to throw in a false dimension for that because that way um, I can go in and change it later. I found out this is probably the most efficient way to make this piece, um, and at least for me it was. And then we got another circle up top. I'm going to use two lines to connect these two circles. Now I'm gonna go in and start throwing in my constraints. So the first thing I'm gonna do, tangent. I'm gonna make this line tangent to this line, and this circle tangent to that line, this circle tangent to that line. That way it just go ahead and makes everything nice and flush. I'm gonna click on trim, and I'm gonna hold down trim, and it's just gonna erase all of this geometry right here, dealing with the circles that I do not need. Now the cool part is now when I go in and type in those dimensions, it's now gonna be radius rather than diameter. And now you can see why I'm doing um, radius rather than diameter. It's because when we look at our, our drawing here, it's in radius. And if your circle was still intact, it would still be diameter. Now what I'm gonna do is under this modify tab, we have change parameters. So what I'm gonna do is add a new parameter. Let's call it a parameter. I'm gonna call it DIA for diameter. Units is gonna be in inches. The first inspection and expression we're gonna use just a, a base number for it to be. We'll just make two inches and then um, comment we can call this diameter. All right, hit okay, call done. Now what I'm gonna do is go in and now dimension this circle, um, or sorry, this, this I guess bottom half of the cam. I'm gonna type in one half, so one slash two times what I called that parametric, which was DIA. I have to hit enter in twice, and you notice a couple of funky things happen, and so I'm just gonna keep dimensioning it, and then what happens is that after a while, uh, this thing starts to come out all right. So this is 0 0.5 times DIA, hit enter, 
I'm going to go ahead and make hit this tangent with that. There we go. And then a coincident constraint, make the center of this circle the center of the circle right there. All right. So I've been throwing in all of my constraints. And then we are good to go as far as um, what we have here. Just to double check, we got the dimension up there. We've got our middle length. We've got our outside radius. And we need to do our inside nominal diameter to 3 16 All right. And that's what we got, folks. As far as this, we are done. Um, however, the problem that you run into with um, this pair cam when it's actually on a physical automata is that the pair cam tends to get stuck right here. So let's go ahead and hit finish sketch. I'm going to go ahead and extrude this uh, to a thickness of 3 16 So the problem is, is that this uh, pair cam gets stuck right here frequently. Uh, and that just has to do with um, friction just taking place and changing directions, acceleration, and actually a thing called jerk. Uh, but I digress. So what I'm going to do then is how do we modify this uh, to be a little more usable? So what I'm going to do is hit Control C. Um, actually, what I'm going to do first is uh, here's what I would do in your shoes. And uh, when I if I'm going to use a pair cam, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this to be whatever diameter I need it to be overall. Um, and so if I need to be three inches, I go ahead and make three inches and then hit OK. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back just a hair. I'm going to go back in this sketch and I'm going to highlight all of it and copy. So right, right click copy. Copy down here. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new sketch over here. Um, and I'm going to paste it. There we go. I'm going to move this up and over. And then talk about how to um, very easily change this to be what you need it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the sketch. And what I found to be the most helpful is I just create an arc that goes from here. Oh, that's, I'm going to finish this line out draw this all the way up top. And then what I'm going to do is trim these pieces away. And instead of it being nice and rounded, what I'm going to do is a three point arc. So one, two, and then three. Um, but that seems a little too far out there. Let's do a three point arc in the middle. There we go. There we go. And then all I'm going to do is mirror this to this. Click OK. Finish sketch. I'm going to go ahead and extrude this out. 3 16 So here's what, um, and then none of this is by my own making. This is some other master teachers have, have found this out to be more successful. <coughs> but if you want that pair cam motion, uh, having it come to a very rounded point uh, seems to be much more effective than that pear shape. Alrighty guys, and then if you want to use this, you can then download that face, throw it in any uh, software systems that you'd use, be a 3D printer, or um, you could use a, a laser and blazer or CNC mill or things like that. And so there you go. There we have our pair cam using dimensional constraints. And um, that'll be it for this, folks. I'll catch you in the next video.